So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end. As per Yahu the prophet, we find layers of understanding of the spring feast, the autumn feast and also the returning of the cities of the Mashiach laid the waste for many centuries. As we read it in Yeshayahu the prophet, we always find layers of understanding regarding also the Mashiach ben Yosef, and then understanding from the Eastern perspective what then the Hebrew culture can teach us regarding then some basic understandings as far as, as the coming of yod he vav he and the function of Savior. So then, regarding these New Testament that we read as far as, as the Mashiach himself, there is lots of strange confusion then mixing up yod he vav he with the person of the Mashiach. Um, in a spiritual sense, there is a distinction from the Torah or the Torah as far as, as the element of the understanding of the spirit or the spirit element. Shaul, known as Paul, has mentioned a section in a chapter 8 of Romans and then another section on a twelfth chapter as far as this renewing of the mind. Let's then make a pause and understand what then this prophet was speaking of. So then, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, it's very important to understand these as far as, as the original manuscript. There is a great deal of misprinting and also the lack of proper translation from the original Hebrew manuscripts. Because of these, the scripture badly translated produces images in the minds of the readers and sometimes they have the wrong perspective. So then, an evaluation of this New Testament, known as the Peshitta, from what we should then be reading from, other than the Greco-Roman translation, because unfortunately, the Greco-Roman translation is repleted with bad translation of Hebrew words. So then, as far as the renewing of the mind, Romans 12, the first verse states, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now then, what does it mean reading this section in Hebrew? The question is, Romans then was recorded during a time where then Shaliach Shaul, known as Paul, he was showing the Torah in the first section of Vaikra, known as Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. That's what then Shaliach Shaul, known as Paul, was showing his people. So then, renewing of your mind with what kind of situation? Is he speaking of the Spirit? No, he's speaking of the teachings of the Torah. That's what Shaliach Shaul is making mentioning of. But the situation is the enlightenment of this section of the Torah obviously is related with the Vaikra or then Leviticus 23rd chapter, the first section of the Holy Feast is were completed by then the Mashiach ben Yosef. Now, many people when they read, they think, well, the Mashiach hasn't come because he has not brought peace 
when he came. Okay, that's an understanding of it. But the Mashiach, truly, when he came, the peace or then the shalom comes to each individual as he or she becomes then one with yod he vav he Firstly then as the function of Av or then Father. You know, every children wants to be in the proper or in the right side of their parents, we hope. So there is a shalom of relationship or peace from parent and children. The relationship with yod he vav he and his function of Av is absolutely the same. There is no distinction from it. So the Torah and the renewing of the mind with the Torah brings us under the guideship of our Father, Av. So then renewing of your, your mind is not related with the Spirit. Or the Spirit come down from heaven and then changing a person. No, it's through the reading of the Torah. No, Bereshit, Shemot, Vaikra, Devraim. That's what truly means. But it is from the original manuscripts. That's why people, they have studies. So then, in Ezekiel, you find then a section related then with a person cannot pay for the sin of the other. So then, truly this is a mitzvah, or then is an instruction that the Av, or then yod he vav he in his holy function, is teaching us. No person can pay for the sin of the other. Now, in Romans 8, there is therefore no condemnation to them who is in the Mashiach. Now, some people say Yeshua, some people say Yahshua. But it's not the person that we are speaking of, it is the tetagram known as yod he vav he He is the person responsible for saving the people, teaching his instructions. So then, for instance, you have Moshe or Moses, Moshe or Mehoshua. You already have the understanding of Yeshua in the word of Moses. So the natural language of Hebrew is teaching how we should relate with yod he vav he in a spiritual understanding. Now then, the fathers of the church, they used their own experiences. And then they began to manipulate the translation from the original manuscripts. So then, not only there are bad translations, but from the bad translations that came from the original Hebrew scripts, try to understand this point. Then the fathers of the church began to create images in their own minds and they lived by those images because they were reading bad translations. And they began to write their own experiences. Then, when the Septuagint came, what did they do? They simply combined what they thought the Hebrews were then writing. And then they introduced the experiences in the midst of it. Because each person is extremely important, and each person has the faith factor and the fact factor. Now, the faith is the relationship with the divine. No person can ever question 
the faith that each person, either he or she, has in the divine. Now there is the factor, or the facts. Now a bad translation giving you then bad facts. So then, an understanding of it. And then the Mashiach walked not after the flesh, for the Torah of the Spirit of Life, and obviously the Torah, the Spirit of Life, understandably comes from yod he vav he but he is explaining via ben Yosef that the first portion of Vaikra, the 23rd chapter, was then completed. And ben Yosef not only taught at the first section and he came and he completed it but also he explained of the autumn feast, spring and autumn. So when we read the Greco-Roman translation, it is repleted with bad words not translated properly. That's why then later then the fathers of the church, they thought they were reading in a certain way and truly they were using wrong words. And then they generated their lifetime of experiences and they introduced mixed with the Hebrew script. That's why there are so many confusions. So then Let's say we are only talking of the Greco-Roman translation in the fact understanding, not faith. For instance, therefore as the Torah was impotent through the flesh that was weak. Okay, how can the Torah be weak? So then, the conflict starts because the Torah is never weak. The understanding is, the lack of knowledge of the times and the seasons brought confusion. And because the fact was not properly given, then other people begin to take advantage of. But the Torah or the Torah was never weak. And then it states so that the righteous act of the Torah or the Torah might be completed in us since it's not in the flesh that we walk but in the spirit understandable. This section I can understand. And then it states that for as the Torah was impotent through the flesh that is weak, then Elohim sent his son so then in the liking sinful flesh that's absolutely not part of the Torah and he used the generic word for the divine Elohim it's some sort of a L translated this section because a person can't pay for the sin of the other that's what the prophet Ezekiel said, and those words came from yod he vav he So the reason why yod he vav he changes not, 
It's because what he said and was recorded cannot be changed. That's why you have the generic word of Elohim. If this was true, it shouldn't be Elohim. It should be yod He vav He in his function. That's why there are so many confusions. And then in his son, and then in the sinful flesh, and then the count of sin, that he might in his flesh condemn sin. It makes absolutely nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense. You can condemn sin in the life of the person. So then, this section was introduced by then the fathers of the church. That's one of those examples. So as we become more familiar with the Hebrew language, we can detect some of these wordings and we know for sure it doesn't belong there. And then it states more, so that then the righteous acts of the Torah might be completed in us. How can it be completed in us if we are relying on a payment of another person for our sin? Makes no sense. Because the wordings used, unfortunately, they were translated wrong. So then he might be completed in us since he's not in the flesh and but in the spirit. Now there's another situation. How can we walk in the spirit with Elohim? Understandably we are talking about this Elohim as singular because we are making a reference of yod he vav he but if it's not then it's a scoundrel of a spirit that he's speaking of. That's why people then they begin to wash themselves and you know and, and rejoicing because the death of a person how can you rejoice in the death of a person that had no sin in his life and he can't pay for the sin of the other that's where the whole confusion then starts because when people begin to read these they begin to rely on a person rather than understanding the spirit so then as far as, as the situations of the flesh that is enmity with the spirit of course it is but notice when you understand for instance Romans 8 the translation rarely is mentioning yod he vav he and there is a huge distinction from Elohim and yod he vav he yod he vav he gives you a list of his functions now if by chance you take each of those functions you begin to mix and come up with theories not based from those functions then you're not dealing with yod he vav he you are dealing with a secular spirit or the spirits and these came in the form of bad translations. So is it the fault of the reader? Well, a portion of it is because people don't research. They don't understand the original language, they don't want to learn it. And they, they take any translation and, and believe as the word of the divine when truly it is not. And why it is not? Because the words used were not properly translated. So that's what we are saying. Then later on the fathers of the church, they begin to read 
and wasn't compatible with the original manuscripts. Then they waited for the lifetime of experience of their own, and then they began to introduce what they thought the divine was for them, but not for the others. So they mixed facts with their own faiths. That's why there are thousands of denominations, because <laughs> we are dealing with Elohim, we're not dealing with yod heh vav -He. Now, it states in the 20th verse, For the creation was subjected to vanity, not by its own choice, but because of him who subjected. Understandably. Now, the word bara or bore, depending on how you read it, that's the creation. That's yod he vav he in his function of creator. Now you have an example of the divine. So sections of it are consistent, sections of it unfortunately is Elohim, and that's not yod he vav he Not only it's a bad translation, but it is an interpretation. That's what those people interpreted, rather than reading from the original manuscripts properly. And then there is the obvious nonsense that was introduced there in order to manipulate the people. One advantage of reading Hebrew and learning the original language is because you can start detecting these translations. That's why when people go to the Holy Land they begin to talk of the JC and unfortunately People over there, they don't receive JC very much from the viewpoint of the unlearned Hebrew people. Because they have a tendency of continuing with the traditions started by a bad translation. It doesn't mean the people are bad. They are not bad people. But unfortunately, they were giving a translation that was not translated properly. So then, as far as Yeshua, we must understand it is not the person of Ben Yosef. He was not Yodehev of He. Is not the person that is made divine. It is the presence of his spirit. It doesn't make the person divine. For instance, Abba would be the vulgar way of saying father. Now, Av is father. Now, Abba is obviously slang. So then when we begin to understand and read Hebrew, these situations they become clearer. It does not change your faith. It simply increases your facts. You begin to clean up the library that unfortunately were given with bad translations. And learning Hebrew does not make you a Jew. As I mentioned to many people, don't be stupid. Same situation as if you are learning English, does it make you an American? No. Does it make you an Australian? No. Does it make you a New Zealander? Uh, because I learned English, I'm an American. No, you are not. 
similar situation if you study Hebrew it does not make you a Jew now if you want to make yourself and study the Talmud if you then is a, you were becoming a student of the Torah or the Torah later on then you can make your selection your choice but you can be perfectly a regular person a saved person without becoming a Jew that's why ex exists a huge gap from many religions because they think oh no don't want to become a Jew and then understand the law. You're not understanding the law. What has Yod He Vav He has said? There is no salvation besides Him. He is the only Savior. Yod He Vav He. The tetagram. And He is a spirit. So the Mashiach ben Yosef, then you find then a person that was anointed, also Joshua, Mehoshua or Moshe, oh, lots of those prophets, they also had the spirit of yod he vav -He in them. But it was not the person, it was yod he vav -He spirit. That's so many people then they get confused. They think, oh, because this person died, because he shed his holy dam and he start paying for sins, and then he owed the I say he changes not. If you read Ezekiel, you're gonna find it. If you read, for instance, Psalm 49, you find it. That's why every time there is a portion of the Holy Scripture, mostly in the New Testament, is absolutely a confusion situation. It's extremely confused because every time there is a portion of this translation against the Torah, you don't find Yod He Vav He, you find Elohim. Ah, but the whole thing is the same thing. It is not. Anything that goes against the Torah or then the instructions or then the prophets and the writings coming from the original Hebrew then obviously is not the work of yod he vav he but is the work of the other El. It's a spirit that is against the Torah. Now the Torah is yod he vav he and there is no salvation other than yod he vav he Another situation for consideration is this. Evaluating the number of translations and the number of writings of the New Testament. For instance, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, they do not exist in Hebrew. Ephesians does not exist in Hebrew. Colossians does not exist in Hebrew. Galatians does not exist in Hebrew. Philippians does not exist in Hebrew. First and Second Thessalonians, they do not exist in Hebrew. Titus does not exist in Hebrew. So then we begin our quest and understand the instructions and the writings and the prophets in making a distinction from Elohim can be any spirit or yod he vav he in his specific function
So then, for instance, Timothy is Barnaba. Then you find Yaakov, Yahanan, you find Gala or Revelation, you find Menachem, Romim. Some of these you find. Now the point is in understanding salvation is Yod He Vav He. There is no salvation besides Him. Now the point of the whole situation is this. Trusting, for instance, a person as a savior is not from the divine. Because the spirit of the divine does not make the flesh divine. That's when then the translation became very confusing because the fact was not clearly given. So then, let's take a glance at Yerushayahu, the 43rd chapter and the 11th verse. And he says very clearly, because he is yod he vav he he is the salvation. He is the Savior, and besides him, there is no other. Now he's talking about Yod He Vav He in his function of Yeshua or Savior. It's a function of himself. So the function of himself to work through Moshe, work through Joshua, work through Yerchayahu worked through Yirmiyahu and worked through Ben Yosef. There is no distinction from Yod He Vav He in his function of Yeshua in the life of Yirmiyahu. So the death of Yirmiyahu could pay for your sin? not so why they are focusing in Ben Yosef for now Ben Yosef granted was spoken of by Mehoshua or Moshe that he is going to be the last prophet and he's going to explain the secrets of it he came, he completed the spring feast, he taught what's coming in the autumn feast, and it was closed. So why Ben Yosef is more important than Yeshayahu? What has Mehoshua mentioned? And later times, amongst your people, Yud Hevav He is going to raise a person like me, like Mehoshua. He was already speaking of the spirit of Yud Hevav He in his life that's going to come up in the future. Does it make Ben Yosef more important than? Moshe or Mehoshua? Of course not. The spirit behind is yod he vav he and he was teaching his instructions. So then, renew your mind. That's what then Shaliak Shaul, known as Paul, is speaking.
reading the Torah, reading the prophets, reading the writings. So then we take away their influence from another El or combination of Elohim that taught you everything wrong. And they begin to renew our minds with the Torah, with the instructions, with the writings, with the prophets. That's what Shaul, the Shaliak, known as Paul, said to do. And they have in mind. Some of these writings of the New Testament, they simply do not exist in Hebrew. Because they make references of a spirit with a generic translation of Elohim and goes against the Torah. That's when the situation becomes very confusing. Now, when the people were never exposed to the Hebrew language, it's understandable. But it's coming a time in history that we are during the time of the Restoration period. Now, the English language and the original Hebrew they have to start matching up. So then, next time I'm going to evaluate all the writings because there is a whole lot more principally in the writings of Hebrews. Uh, it's a big, huge problem because the writings of Hebrew or Hebrews or Ivory it has a lot of information in there that it must bit by bit clear up the facts the faith remains the direct link with the divine remains now the facts are extremely screwed up you're going to take bit by bit and understand then when is the true translation what divine name is used what function should be and what simply was introduced by the fathers of the church because they read wrong translations they made interpretations on their own and they mixed up their own ideas and they came up with the scripture of their own Part of it is true, part of it isn't. They simply interpreted because of their lifetime experience and because people have lifetime experience with the religion does not make them an authority of changing the Torah. So next time we're going to evaluate other writings so then we can upgrade our library so then our relationship with the divine becomes more improved and people can start reading and understanding some of these layers so then when you get to Galah or Revelation then becomes clearer that's why so many people don't understand Revelation because oh Revelation is so complicated it's symbolism it's not symbolism Revelation is quite direct. But because people do not know how to read the Hebrew text, and they are ignorant, thinking if they learn Hebrew, they become Jew. And that's the very scoundrel of the enemy, or then the adversary, or a scoundrel spirit, that is leading people away from the true salvation. So then later on I'm going to understand more of these via these other writings so then I can start understanding from the original language. So please stay tuned, much more coming up.